Hi there, this is Saul Chiron from Saul Chiron and Films and welcome to another collection and recommendations video. Um, today's collection video is my Scream Factory collection. Um, I have now watched them all so I'm just going to give some recommendations for what that's worth. Um, I don't have a ton of Scream Factory um, they are Region A Blu-rays, so obviously if you don't have a multi-region Blu-ray player you probably won't be able to play them. Um, but if you do, it opens up a whole new can of worms for spending money. I'll just go through them alphabetically. The first one is The Ambulance. This is one of Larry Cohen's finest films. Um, starring Eric Roberts with a fantastic uh, mullet and James Earl Jones um, Stan Lee's actually in this and Red Buttons um, and also an early performance by Janine Turner who would go on to bigger fame with Northern Exposure and it's the moving story of a man who um, follows an attractive girl, not in a creepy way, well, kind of in a creepy way, um, and then she has, she collapses in the street, gets picked up by an ambulance, and he tries to find her in the hospitals, and he can't find her, and it turns out that there's a nefarious ambulance going around the city, preying upon people. Um, it's a ton of fun. The extras, there's a commentary by Larry Cohen, um, who of course sadly died recently. Um, his commentaries are really well worth listening to, as far as how to make low budget films. Um, I would recommend listening to this and also his commentary on The Stuff, which has got an Arrow release. Um, that's a really good commentary as well. So that's the first one. Ambulance. The second one is the Amityville Horror, which is not a bad wee film about obviously a haunting, loosely based on a true story apparently. Um, and this edition has, it does have a making of and a retrospective. Um, with James Brolin and Margaret Kidder. Um, but this has an audio commentary by Dr. Hans Holzer, who's a PhD in parapsychology, which is very um, amusing. Next one is a John Carpenter classic, Assault in Precinct 13. I should say with the exception of one film which I'll get to. The prints on Scream Factories are really nice. Um, they do do a really good job um, on prints. And this one's no different, Assault and Precinct 13. This has new interviews, audio commentary with Carpenter. Um, it's one of Carpenter's best, Assault and Precinct 13. The next one, because I did get some of Scream Factories in a job lot off eBay, um, I got rid of some of them because they were atrocious. Um, this one is Backcountry, which is actually a nice little film um, about two people going deep in the woods and they probably shouldn't have, and they meet a big bear with not so hilarious consequences. Um, when it gets to it, it's um, 
I wouldn't necessarily eat your lunch before you watch this. It's actually a nice wee film. Um, obviously it's low budget, but it, they do a good job. It's a, it's a nice wee film. Next one is The Battery, which is yet another low budget zombie film, but it's actually quite entertaining. Um, again, this was made for literally no budget. Um, the guy with the beard in the cover is the writer-director. Um, it's a very small cast. It's got a great score. Um, it's not a great, it's not a great film by any stretch of imagination, but it's a nice wee zombie film. The next one is the burning with a slip cover for those people that are that way inclined. This is an 80s slasher that isn't the best 80s slasher in the world. Um, but it does have an interview with the director, Tony Malum, who's actually English and had no interest in slasher films. Didn't do any after this, didn't do any before it. Um, and Alan Jones is on the commentary track who does a lot of giallo and horror stuff for Arrow. So the commentary is actually very good. Um, probably better than the film. Next one is Creep Show. And this is the, I think, the new release, which has. A nice little book. Because Creepshow is the best one out of the the two. Um, the George Romero. This has reversible artwork as well. The creepiest one in this um, is the one with E.J. Marshall in the really clean apartment building until he develops a cockroach issue. Um, that one's uh, rather <clears throat> horrible. The one with Stephen King and his green algae is interesting. Um, and the one with this little fellow is, is quite good. And also the one with Leslie Nielsen playing a a dastardly man, which is kind of hard to watch and take serious because it's Leslie Nielsen. Um, yeah, it's a nice little film. Obviously, not Romero's best, um, but an hour and a half of fun. The next one is Dead Ringers. This is one of my favourites. To me, this is Cronenberg's best film. Again, this has a slip cover. Oh. And this is the two disc. And this has a commentary with William Beard, who wrote a book on Cronenberg's films. But most importantly, it's got a commentary with Jeremy Irons, which is really good. Um, and I would urge people to check it out. Um, because it's a really good commentary with Jeremy Irons. Because unlike a lot of actors, he's not actually um, blowing his own trumpet. Um, yeah, it's a masterpiece, and the extras are really good as well. So that's Dead Ringers. The next one is The Dead Room, um, which I was going to get rid of, and then I went. No, I'll keep it anyway. It's a little Australian um, haunting film um, about three people who go to debunk um, a haunted house. It's not the best film in the world, but um, the three performers play it with gusto. The next one is Dog Soldiers. Now, this is the one that has a story. The print on this is w a lot darker than the original film. Um, they lost 
the original negative so it's kind of it's not a great print it's a lot darker um, there's a ton of extras on it but you're probably better off with the DVD version but not a Scream Factory but I did find this German um, digi book or media book um, which has a Blu-ray and a 4K and the Blu-ray print on this is a lot better than the Scream Factories because um, again I think they kind of lost the original print or the original negative for the film um, but this German version the print is really nice so it might not be a Scream Factory but that's a very very nice print next one is another Carpenter classic Escape from New York and Escape from New York with a slip cover <laughs> this was a it was an accident um, I got this one really cheap on eBay and completely forgot that I already had the one without the slip cover <clears throat> this is a two disc version it's got commentaries with Adrian Barbo, Dean Cundy um, and lots of interviews it might not be his best film but it's certainly um, a whole load of fun or as it says in the back dark and dangerous that's Escape from New York the next one is Evil Speak which is probably one of the worst ones that I'll actually keep um, it's not great it stars Clint Howard of Gentle Ben fame um, as a bullied kid at a military school who finds some kind of demonic black mass witchcraft thing and he gets his revenge on his, his bullies but it takes way too long to actually get to the point for all you gentle Ben fans um, I would maybe not pick that one up the next one is The Exorcist 3 I think this was one of my first Scream Factories as soon as I got um, a multi-region player I think that was my first purchase um, made a, I've mentioned it before and I've made a video on it before this is my favourite Exorcist film um, it's really Legion rather than Exorcist 3 the studio as studios do completely botched it and um, stuck on an exorcism at the end even though it's got nothing to do with exorcisms really um, it's a really deep dark unsettling serial killer film which um, the studio tacked on a an exorcism scene at the end which is just for no reason whatsoever um, but even this has the director's cut which does have kind of VHS elements to try and get as close to William Peter Blatty's vision so it's not perfect but that cut is better than the theatrical cut which again has a lot of good stuff but it also has the terrible tact on um, exorcism yeah there's lots of better people that have done videos about this um, it's a fantastic film though it's flawed but it really is creepy and unsettling the next one is The Fog another John Carpenter I think I've got a bunch of Scream Factory John Carpenter um, again this is a really nice print it's got a bunch of commentaries um, and a bunch of featurettes really nice next one is Toby Hooper's The Fun House which is kind of okay again it's got a good commentary by Toby Hooper the next one is another personal favourite 
Halloween 3, again for me, the best film in the Halloween series, is number 3. The best film in the Exodus series is number 3. Um, I would over, I would almost go crazy and say the best film in the Alien um, trilogy is number 3. Yeah, okay. That's great. Halloween 3, nothing to do with Michael Myers, even though he does appear on television screen, so he is in it. Um, yeah, and this is a ton of extras, commentaries, the whole works. Highly recommend it. Some people hate it. They're wrong, but never mind. This is The Harvest. This is a curious little film um, by John McNaughton, who did Henry Portrait of Serial Killer. Um, it's more something that M. Night Shyamalan would do. Um, it's depressing and everybody's very sad. Um, it's about a sick boy and he's befriended by a girl but his parents don't want to um, have him having any friends because they harbour a dark secret. Oh, what a twist. Um, they actually, the back of the box is hilarious because it, it says that um, this is equally as terrifying as Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer, which is not true. Um, Samantha Morton's performance is either really good or she's just too much. Um, and Michael Shannon just looks as though he doesn't want to be there. Which, to be honest, is what his character's going through. Um, it's an interesting little film as John McNaughton chose this to make his comeback with. Um, yeah, Harvest. The next one's an old favourite, The Howling. Joe Dante. It's a fun little werewolf film. Um, there's commentaries and makings of and looking back. So it's, it's a great wee film. And it's a great addition, Howling. The Incredible Melting Man is the next entry. Um, this is quite a sad, tragic little film um, about an astronaut who comes back after being in space and just starts melting and killing people. It's actually quite sad. Um, yeah, low budget. Not the best acting, but something strangely moving about it. The next one is an underrated little gem. It's John Carpenter's In the Mouth of Madness with slipcover. I can't actually remember where I put this in my favourite Carpenter in my top ten. I think it was actually in the top half because it is an underrated little film about... Um, art coming to life, it's very Lovecraftian um, and it's very film within a film and it's really good fun that kind of stands up to um, repeated viewings in the mouth of madness. Next one is Lake Placid which is a great wee fun um, giant crocodile film. Um, this and Rogue make a nice double bill, even though Rogue is played straight and is rather effective. Um, Lake Placid has its tongue firmly in Crocodile's cheek. Next one is Mad Max with very nice artwork. This is the original um, with an Australian soundtrack, not as it was in American theatres with an American dub track. Um, yeah, Mad Max. Don't need to say much more than that, do you? Next one is one of my favourites, Manhunter. This is the theatrical cut and the director's cut, even though for me the European video version is the best version. Um, 
Forget Silence of the Lambs. Forget Anthony Hopkins. Watch Manhunt and Brian Cox instead. Next one is Monkey's Paw, which again is one of the job lot. Um, three out of five a push films. Um, this is about a monkey's paw that gives you three wishes, even though they're slightly twisted wishes. Um, and this stars the wonderful Stephen Lang. That's pretty much the only reason for watching it. The next one is Nightbreed, the director's cut. This might actually be the first Screen Factory that I bought, um, just to see the director's cut of Nightbreed. Because again, a film about the monsters are actually the good guys, didn't really go down that well, so the studio being the studio butchered it. Um, but the director's cut has added 40 minutes. And if nothing else, this film you should watch for David Cronenberg's performance as a psychiatrist because he's very creepy. Next one is The Pack, it's another Australian film um, and it's about a pack of wild dogs terrorising a farmhouse and the family within. Simple but effective. Next one is Phantasm 2 which I think I prefer over the original. This is the only Phantasm I have. Um, I've only seen the first two. Um, again, commentaries, interviews, the extras in Scream Factories are generally rather good. Next one is Phantom of the Paradise, which, thanks to Nazrin Productions, um, again, I might put a link to his review of Phantom of the Paradise by Brian De Palma. It might actually be my favourite musical now. Um, this is a two disc version. Um, music by Paul Williams who did Bugsy Malone. Um, it's Faust and Mephistopheles and oh it's fantastic. Next one is another John Carpenter. It's Prince of Darkness. Again this has got commentary, new interviews. This is the one that should be better than it actually is, but it's not quite. Um, and it's probably just because the characters aren't as good as other Carpenter films. The next one is Psycho, the remake. The next one is John Carpenter's Someone's Watching Me, who I did a random review on. This is his TV movie he did before Halloween. And it's a really nice little film about a stalker. The next one is this, which is quite a bizarre film um, with Struther Martin as a doctor um, messing about with Snake Venom and Dirk Benedict from Face on the A Team um, being his unwitting um, sample student test subject. Yeah, strange. Next one is Stung, which is a run-of-the-mill creature feature um, with Lance Henriksen and some nice creature effects. Next one is Tales of the Crypt Bordello of Blood, even though I'd really like to get Demon Knight. Um, this is Dennis Miller and again the commentary but the director is just wonderful because Dennis Miller just didn't want to do it wasn't interested um, he said he would do it for a million dollars and the, the production company actually said yes um, yeah the commentary is probably better than the film the next one is another Carpenter it says classic they live which is more and more relevant every day um, Roddy Piper and Keith David just fantastic. This has got a commentary with Carpenter and Piper and another interview with Carpenter. Highly recommend it. If you haven't seen They Live, you really need to. And strangely enough, I've also got Carpenter's The Thing on Screen Factory. One of my five different editions of The Thing. Um, 
What can I say? It might be one of my favourite films of all time. The Town That Dreaded Sundown, which is actually an interesting little serial killer film starring Ben Johnson, as if he needs an excuse to watch a film with Ben Johnson. Um, based on a true story, um, it's actually quite effective and it's it's a nice little film. I was actually pleasantly surprised by it. And finally, Zombie or Zombie Flesh Eaters, which literally just says we are going to eat you. Um, not Filch's best for me. Um, I think he did a lot better than Zombie Flesh Eaters, but this is one of his famous ones um, for the splinter and for the shark. But I think he did a lot better films than this. So that's my small Scream Factory collection and random recommendations. So thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you have any Scream Factory which Scream Factories you would recommend that I get that I don't have. And hopefully we'll see you again. This is Soldier Ronan saying farewell.